What I'm going to show you today is it's my version of food waste, JLF. Right outside my kitchen door, I keep a couple of buckets where I throw my food waste. My style is about equivalent to the person that keeps a little food waste bucket in or near their kitchen where they put food scraps before they actually take them to their compost pile. For me, I have a little container for my food waste inside my door and then when that fills up I take it to one of my two buckets right outside my door. So I have these leftover minerals on my deck from back when I thought you needed to add these things to your soil to improve them. Things like rock dust, sea minerals, I slowly add them to my buckets just to get rid of them but in the future it's merely going to be rainwater, in the summer hose water, either salt, sea salt, or so there's lots of salt water around here that I might throw in there for minerals. It's mostly veggie scraps, fruit scraps, rotten stuff, rotten fruit vegetables, lots of coffee grounds, and I don't pay attention at all to ratios or anything. I also put old ferments in here, so sometimes I'll go into a cabinet and see some old JLF or FFJ or something and I'll go, whoa, um, I don't know what to do with that. So I, I'll throw it as like some extra beneficial um, or just whatever, something living also that's gonna get thrown in there. I put uh, about a handful of wood chips in there too. So the key is to just put all the fungi and bacteria that I can find in there and I let them just go to town in that bucket. Since it's not true food waste JLF because if it were, I would fill up my container, seal it, and then let it sit for, I guess depending on the temperature, whatever is in that Jadam book. I know for urine, it has to sit for what, six months? So maybe this is at least six months. And what I like about Jadam and KNF is the longer things sit, actually the better they are. So if you can even keep it for a year or two years. I do have a container sitting somewhere on my property that does have food waste, true food waste gel left in it, and it's sitting there and it's cooking. And so one day I will open it and maybe take you along to see what's in there. But it's probably not truly food waste gel left until all the materials have disintegrated. I'm guessing, or at least you drain out the liquid. There's a way that you can construct uh, like tubing and mesh so that only the liquid comes out, but the solids stay in there. And all this, and all the JLF preparations, all the solids stay in there until they disintegrate. Uh, you can keep adding to it, but you only draw out the liquid. So this is like my, just my take, uh, my lazy kind of take. I have so much food scraps. I can't even imagine how many containers I would have to have to have. I, I mean, I guess I have enough land, but it's just a lot of plastic to keep on hand to have all of this food waste just sit there. That, you know, all the food waste that you generate just sit there for one or two years. The rest of this, I'm just gonna ha take you along to, to see how I dump it on the ground. How much you fill it up is based on your strength. So for me, I might fill it up with water about halfway and then food scraps up to here. This is actually kind of heavy for me, but I can do it. I can lug it along. I think if you were a man, you could probably fill it all the way. For it to be comfortable, it probably would have to be halfway, but this is, and this is like more like three quarters. So it's a little bit heavy for me, but I can do it. Okay, so this is how it works. You start with one layer of wood chips, which I already have on the ground. Then you break the plastic off of your bucket. 
and you toss it somewhere to forget about it. Then you pick up your bucket with more care. This is easier with two hands. There's all my slop. Okay. And then before you smell it too much, you got your trusty wood chips here. Or you just get smart about it and put the camera down. I do it twice with two buckets. This is how my buckets look after I've dumped them. So with the remaining gook in here, I'll just take a bucket that's been sitting out in the rain. And I use the rainwater to sort of shake it up. And then I just use this as fertilizer somewhere else. Let's say I wanted to fertilize this strawberry plant. The rain will just soak that in. And then I don't worry about getting it too clean because I'm just gonna refill it with food. So now I'm gonna do just another, I'll just use rainwater to fill it back up. Okay, so we're back. And what I've done is I fill the buckets back up with three small handfuls of wood chips from three different wood chip piles that I have right now. So, after I do that, then I fill it up with rainwater. bucket that I used that's collecting rainwater. It's one of my old azomite lives. So some of that azomite came into the 
water, but then I'll add some more. some of these old sea, sea minerals that I'm using up when I'm done with this. I'm just going to use sea salt or sea water. That there is my sea water. If you want to make this sort of like JMS, you add soil from different forests. I have collected here so so you could do that and that's sort of JMSE I have different collection bags and then but you know since I already have wood chips I I feel like that's optional as the food level rises, I'm going to come here and I'm going to, you know, add more water to try to keep the food emerged. I collect some roof water right there, so I'll take extra rainwater from there if I need to. Let's scoop it up. And now these buckets are ready for any kind of food scraps, except for meat, which I don't put in there. And now we're ready to go. Look at this area, there's no food scraps. And look at, look at these holes here. This is where my psilocybin mushrooms were. Some critter burrowed here underneath this sorrel plant. There's no food scraps here. So, so the animals like to dig around in here anyway. Think of the critters as your aeration tools. Uh, also fertilizer. So they drop their own fertilizer. They aerate your soil. And what do I care if they eat my trash? I have snakes, I have stoats. I have all kinds of, um, other neighbors have seen bobcats. So I have all kinds of predators here to eat all, any kind of uh, rodent or other pesty critter. So um, yeah, I'm not worried about that. We have like these native compost worms that will come, if you feed them, they will come. So they will come up through the soil, the wood chips, and they will eat all that food and provide their own fertilizer. I've seen iridescent compost worms. I hope I see them again so I can show you. This is how it looks after application. If I see any plants that I like, I won't throw it on the plants. I just kind of weave it through the plants. Since the wood chips are getting thin around here under this old apple tree, this will be the next place that I, that I lay my my food waste because you have all this area that I can fill. That's a lot of compost that this, this, this one spot will hold before I have to move on to another spot. And I have so many spots. So I never run out of space. <laughs>